Presenting for us today will be in the following order. Stephen Saldivar from Big Springs Independent School District, Randy Brown from Cahoma Independent School District, and Randy Johnson from Forsan Independent School District. We will also be hearing from Ed Mohan from the Big Springs State Hospital, and Ava Jo Hanslick, and Megan Dice. No, Megan, no, no. <laughs> in community relations with the West Texas VA healthcare systems. Each of our presenters will have 12 minutes, and if time presents, we'll have question and answers after all have presented. So, let's get this thing going. Stephen, it's up to you. Today I want to talk about the Big Spring Way, and the Big Spring Way is all about uh, student engagement and the efforts that, that we make uh, toward engaging our students in being engaged in meaningful and relevant work. It's all about the culture that we have at Big Spring ISD. <clears throat> there, there's a, a quote from Albert Einstein that I found um, that talks about and, and goes to the heart of what I really believe um, uh, is the culture uh, here in Big Spring. And in red, it, it really uh, goes to what uh, I hope uh, we're about. In our daily lives, we only feel that man is here for the sake of others, for those whom we love, and for many of other beings whose faith is connected with our own. What we believe is that as we work with kids, okay, the fate of kids is, is in the hands of adults, and that if it wasn't for adults, uh, teachers, uh, other administrators, that so often these kids would not have, have a chance. And the moral purpose that we have, so often, uh, goes unnoticed and as we go through our daily lives as we do the job that, that we miss really uh, the, the true purpose of what education is. So the culture of Big Spring ISD is more than just teaching. Uh, it is about uh, raising kids to be citizens, to, to understand uh, what their calling is in, in this life. And it, it really goes to uh, teachers uh, giving of themselves every day, going beyond who they are, and, and understanding that there is a moral purpose in, in teaching, and that they give of themselves every day, and that they uh, are able to see that what they do is going to be able to make a huge difference in the life of a child. Uh, I found this quote also, it talks about, uh, you know, we, we continue, continuously hear about 21st century skills, and, and that's a, a buzzword that we, we hear very often. Um, and really, sometimes we, we are, are uh, you know, confused about what are 21st century skills. Uh, the quote says, the illiterate of 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. As, as we look uh, all around us, things are changing so fast. And, uh, uh, you know, we don't know what we're preparing our kids for because things are so are changing so fast. Technology is changing at such a rapid pace. Um, so what we're trying to do here at Big Spring is develop a culture where we're trying to get our kids to, to, to be able to learn and think for themselves in a critical manner. Uh, to be able to uh, be productive once they get out of school. To be able to learn, but also to be able to unlearn some things that they learn. And to be able to relearn some things that they're gonna have to know once they've gotten out into the workplace. We also continuously ask ourselves this question. Are we all headed in the same direction? Because we're really big about uh, the direction that we're headed. Are we all going in that same direction? And we're going to talk about that here in just a second, okay? So we are always asking ourselves that question. Are we headed in the same direction? We had a retreat about a month ago, okay? And I, I uh, took our, our uh, administrators, we, we, there was about 30 of us, and I'm from El Dorado, Texas. And uh, we all got on a bus and rode for about, I guess, two and a half hours. And one of the reasons for that was I wanted them to experience what it, what it was like to ride a bus like the kids did. And they rode, we rode out to, to El Dorado to a, a ranch that a friend of mine has, it's called the X Bar Ranch. And we, we went out there for a day. And we went out and we 
spent the day out of, at this ranch. And one of the activities that we did was we wanted to talk about success and failure. And what was that? What, what is success for us here at Big Spring? And what is uh, failure? And we came up with these things right here, okay? Um, and just like any, in any group activity, uh, we, we put up some chart paper and we just started talking about success and what, we're, what, what is failure. And there on the left side, those are some things that they, they said was success. What, what uh, does success look like? They said things like excitement, transfer of knowledge, positive communication, being unselfish, transformation, trust, involvement from all stakeholders, overcoming challenges, <coughs> lifelong challenges, lifelong learners, integrity, citizenship, changing lives, real and lasting connections. What does it mean to be a failure? Focus on self, being stagnant, making excuses, lack of communication, being selfish, lack of self-worth, being blind, having despair, having no direction, being apathetic, having no direction, I'm sorry, uh, being empty, emptiness, giving up, and having high turnover. What we're going to do this year, we're going to, we're going to make posters of this, so we're going to put these up in every classroom, we're going to put them up in every office, okay, and every month during our administrative meetings that we hold, we're going to come and I'm going to ask every administrator to come up and share a success story from, from this list, so that we can in a way quantify success stories. How, how are we able to quantify that we're being successful? You know, so often we, we think that, that uh, we can measure things simply by numbers on a, on a Likert scale. But uh, too often in school, okay, it's hard to, to quantify if you're being successful by just uh, the things that you see and the things that you witness and how you feel. Because it's hard to uh, take something that's abstract and say that you're being successful. I'm going to tell you sometimes that uh, uh, by simply looking at tax scores does not tell you that you, you have a successful school. There's a lot more than just scores, okay? I'm going to show you an email that I received from a teacher this past year. And uh, bear with me because I want to read this to you. This is one of many emails that I've received during the year, but this is one that I received uh, at the end of, of school. It said, Mr. Salvador, yesterday after our faculty meeting over here at, and I'm not going to name the school, I was feeling quite discouraged due to the tax force. One of the main reasons I was down was because for the first time since I've been teaching in this district, it is my fifth year here at BSISD, I felt good about what was happening. Teachers were happy for the most part. Students were excited about learning. Curriculum was aligned. Communication was better between teachers and parents. So when the scores came out and they weren't what we had hoped, and they were, they were all right, but you know, teachers have high expectations. She said, but they weren't what we had hoped. I was afraid we might have to go back to the way things were. I hope we get to give all of this uh, a few more years because it is what is right for kids. I know I'm preaching to the choir, but with all the negative you hear, I thought some positive might feel good. Yeah, it did feel good. I'm including one of my students' letters that they wrote to a first grade class. As you will see, it is not edited. Also, this is not one of my A-plus students, but she is a good student, and uh, we had been doing things the way we have always done, and if we had been doing things, we've always done it, what she says in her letter might not have happened. Thank you for all you do. I'm, I didn't put the letter up here, but the letter talked about that they had been having fun, that they were thinkers, that they were encouraged to take risks, that they were encouraged to dream big. They were encouraged uh, to do things that they had never, um, um, you know, never been encouraged to do. That they weren't just given worksheets, tax worksheets, but yet they were encouraged to be free thinkers and to be imaginative and to do things that they had never had done before. And that these kids were having fun in school, but, they, but built into the fun there was rigor at the same time. And these are some of the letters that I get from time to time. So this is the culture that, that we're building. I believe that beliefs set the direction. These are the beliefs that we have at BSISD. We believe that we must recruit and retain highly qualified staff. We believe that we must maintain integrity and professionalism at all times. We believe that we must provide a caring and safe environment, not only physically, 
but also emotionally so that kids feel safe to take a risk academically. We, must, we believe that we must ensure instructional time and that that time is valued. We believe that we must provide ongoing, meaningful professional development, that we are truly a learning organization and not a bureaucracy. We believe that uh, we must design and deliver relevant and engaging instruction to our kids. Our vision for the district is that we will instill respect and pride in all by empowering our community of learners, staff, and students to unite and commit to edu educational excellence. What will we instill? We will instill respect and pride. We will empower whom? We will empower all our community of learners. And what will we uh, unite and commit to? Educational excellence. And educational excellence is a moving target. That's an abstract term. So will we ever get there? No, but we're always headed that way. What is the roadmap? Roadmap. We have a, and we look at it as a systematic view. Okay? Six things. The directional system. That's the way we set goals. The knowledge and development and transmission system. That's how we um, teach things. That's the way we transmit knowledge to students, to uh, the adult learners in our organization. Uh, the recruitment induction system. That's how we go out and recruit teachers those that are going to be part of our organization. Not everybody fits in our organization. When we, when we re, uh, recruit and when we uh, interview, as a matter of fact, after this meeting here, I have four interviews. We're going to interview four teachers. All four are not going to fit in, in the organization. Because as, as we build questions, we're looking for the right fit. Okay? The boundary system, that means those that the boundary that, that we have at BSISD. Okay? Uh, those that are inside our organization and that understand the norms and, and those things that are part of who we are. The evaluation system, those things that we value. Not just, you know, are you good enough or not good enough. What do we value? And the power and authority system. Okay, we share authority, we share power. There's no boss. It's a shared authority because we all know the direction that we're headed. We also have 10 capacity standards that we uh, live by. These standards are, the first standard is, we have to develop a shared understanding for a need for change. Times are changing, things must change. And we all, we all have to understand and have an understanding of that. We have to have a shared uh, belief for a vision. Uh, we all have to focus on uh, a quality, that we all need quality work provided to students. We uh, develop structures for participatory leadership, okay? Develop standards for results-oriented decision-making. Develop structures for continuity. Providing ongoing support, fostering innovation, employing technology, fostering collaboration. See, while all this may seem like a lot of fluff, there's a lot of systems that have been in place so that the organization, because the organization is pretty big. We have 600 employees. We have a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, systems that are in place that have to run smoothly in order for it to be effective. Okay, we have almost 4,000 students. We have eight campuses. So there has to be a, a very clear direction, a vision, so that everybody that's in the organization knows what we're doing, knows where we're going. So these are the, the standards. A standard is how are we going to evaluate the things that we have in place? What are the things that we're doing? Okay, the last slide that I have. How much time do I have? I'm about out. Okay, I'm, I'm done with this. These are some of the things that we're doing. Through the Selecty Center, that is uh, some of our staff development that we do. That's how we provide uh, student engagement. Okay? And then we, our curriculum is called C-Scope, and I think that Randy Johnson is going to talk about C-Scope. Okay, that's how we provide a viable and guaranteed curriculum. And the bottom is some of the other staff development that we provide. I appreciate your time. Are there any questions? Okay, yeah. Thank you.